All right, so thank you uh, everyone for joining this week's weekly wave. Uh, we have a few updates for you guys in terms of reports for this week. Uh, so to get right into it, I'm going to start off with a reminder, the same reminder I've been saying for the past few weeks. Uh, we do have our end of year reports uh, starting to open. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you're checking all four of the data monitoring uh, tools that we have available to you uh, throughout the wave and single sign-on. Uh, so if you're seeing any issues with that, that uh, seem uh, to be an issue that is not an issue in your student information system, please reach out to our office and we will take a look and see what's going on. Uh, if it's a issue on our end, we'll go ahead and make sure that any errors that are showing up in relation to what you're bringing up to us is cleared out. <clears throat> we are still getting some questions about ed plan and why some students are either still appearing in their district or why they are not appearing in ed plan. And uh, in usually the two situations that we're seeing right now are uh, the usage of the exit code 3505 and the usage of the entry code, or in some cases, even the exit code of 9999, which in both situations just means other. Uh, we're not expecting to ever get the entry or exit code of 9999 unless our office specifically comes out with guidance directing you to use that code. Uh, it is expected to only be used in emergency legislation. So if you're using this code now uh, as a kind of blanket tracking code for some students that you may be testing for uh, to see if they're eligible for services, uh, do know that using those codes will not result in a student either being uh, auto enrolled or transferred or auto exited in ed plan. Uh, you'll have to change it to any other code uh, that we have available. 9999, again, is not a code that will auto trigger any situation in ed plan. The student will stay there. Uh, the same thing applies for the exit code of 3505, because to us, that is a general exit code that uh, insinuates that the student is going to be returning back to the site that they have been exited from. So if you're using 3505 and you know the student has transferred, go ahead and update that exit code if you are able uh, to a more uh, applicable exit code for that student. Using 3505 will not result in the student being auto exited from your district. They'll continue to pop up uh, as uh, needing to be there. And on to some report updates. The demographic overlay, uh, which is maintained by the accountability office, will be opening uh, either today or tomorrow. So be on the lookout for an announcement from accountability letting you know that uh, that report is now open for you to review. Uh, so you can make sure that if you're needing uh, to make uh, any adjustments in your student information system, you can do that. Uh, before uh, updated information is given to the assessment vendors. Uh, the ASR is still open. It's still going pretty strong. Uh, you want to keep looking at your calendars, bringing up any issues that you find uh, to either our, our office or state aid. Uh, it's better if you have a combo of both, if you like. Um, and after you are sure that your calendars are good to go, uh, even with uh, knowing that you might have to change a few days here and there between now and the end of the year, uh, you can go ahead and start looking at the student attendance. Uh, student attendance information, uh, the membership attendance and transportation are all uh, calculated off of the calendars. So if the calendars are wrong, your student membership attendance and transportation are going to be off as well. Uh, we do request for uh, the student daily attendance and the uh, student transportation on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Uh, we have that uh, schedule posted on the chat. 
we do have a guide and a series of videos available for you on our website uh, that'll walk you through the ASR if you haven't done this before or just need a refresher. And to circle back to the demographic overlay, uh, the accountability, accountability is, uh, to my knowledge, going to be hosting a uh, webinar of sorts. Uh, I'm not sure of the date right now, uh, but I believe that that should be included in the uh, email that they'll be sending out either today or tomorrow uh, when they let you know that the report is open. All right, and the request schedule for our, <clears throat> for when we uh, request for data is posted in the chat right now, if you need the link. And thank you. Uh, there will be a webinar tomorrow for the demographic overlay at noon. The last report, uh, not the last report update, sorry, second to last update uh, report wise is related to the graduation part time quarter three report that was recently extended and will now close on uh, Friday. So you've got one more day to get your quarter three part time grads entered into that report. Hey, Lakeisha. Yep. On the ASR, so we have a new thing out there for the notes, and it shows that they have unread notes, and it'll be like in bright red if they've ever been out there, and they can um, click on read, and it'll make it go away that you don't have any more. But um, districts, feel free to make any notes that you have that you have different kind of calendars or um, your increases in your membership or your transportation. And um, that's where the SDE keeps track of whenever you call, when a district calls, when they have a problem. So we know that we, we've been in contact and trying to figure something out. But um, I'm, I'm kind of excited about that little note thing. <laughs> but thanks, y'all. Thank you, Lori. All right, so moving on to the dropout report. Some of you may have noticed that the uh, name of the report has changed since last week. It has changed from the fourth quarter dropout report to the full fiscal year 2020 dropout report. Uh, it was changed uh, in order to kind of make it a little clearer on what uh, fiscal year we were reporting off of. Uh, and just as a reminder, our fiscal year goes from July 1st through June 30. So there have been some changes uh, since last week. We've been hinting at the ability to do on-screen data entry uh, for the dropout report uh, due to situations where you have uh, updated exit activity because of uh, activity that happened over the summer or you're, you were not sure what happened to the student at the end of the year and got updated information at the beginning of school year 2021. Uh, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So uh, we are uh, allowing for on-screen data entry. Uh, this should be rolling out throughout the day today. Uh, for those of you who have previously reached out to us, uh, this is going to be for uh, 2020 enrollments only, uh, because we are expecting for you to be able to make edits to school year 2021 information in your student information system. So in order to get on-screen data entry unlocked, uh, you'll have to reach out to uh, the Data and Information Systems Office first. Uh, and then once you get into the report, you can go ahead and click on the on-screen data entry button here on your screen. It's right next to the site selector. Uh, what you'll do here, find the student that needs to have their enrollment record updated. And once you click that button, Three rows will pop up where you can, if uh, the data is missing, enter the entry date, drop date, and exit reason. If you're only needing to update the exit reason, uh, you can just update the exit reason, click update, and a pop-up will pop up on your screen, uh, letting you know that the record was updated. Uh, the change will take effect on the report immediately, but it will take overnight for the student to drop off if you're changing the exit code to an exit code uh, that isn't considered to be a dropout. 
if you're changing them to a exit code that uh, we are expecting to have a subsequent enrollment for, and they're still appearing on the report, you can still reach out to us to do some lookup to see if for some reason that student has had a name change or something like that between districts causing the STN to update. Uh, we have made a significant uh, change to the report recently, uh, where we're seeing situations where students were only appearing on the dropout report due to uh, mismatching STNs between years. And so that should also be reconciled uh, for many of you uh, the next time you have go in to look at the report if you have not done so already. Uh, there has also been a, a change here uh, in relation to uh, the reporting window. So previously, if uh, a student was not enrolled by September 30th, they would be considered a dropout, even if we were able to find a subsequent enrollment, say in late October or onward after that. There was a change in the uh, EDFAC definition for the 1920 dropout a report that allows us to uh, take off any student that was ever enrolled uh, in school year 2021. So we don't have the cutoff date of September 30th. So if you have a student that has re-enrolled uh, in another school district or your district in, a, in another site uh, after September 30th, for this dropout report only, 1920, uh, we are able to drop that student off of the report and not consider them to be a dropout. Uh, for school year 2021's uh, dropout report, unless something changes, uh, we will have to go back to the uh, October 1 through September 30 uh, reporting window for this report like it has been done in years past. So we will be sending out uh, an update to the guidance later on uh, this morning, hopefully, uh, that will explain everything that I just uh, kind of went through here. Uh, but one thing uh, with making changes to the report, uh, due to state auditors rules, uh, and some graduation specific uh, rules as well, a DVR or data verification request for the 14 exit, exit codes that you see on my screen, uh, will be required uh, to be submitted through accountability reporting for date, grades seven and up for school year 2021. Uh, this is not uh, something that has changed from, from years past. Uh, you, you'll still have to go in and verify with documentation any students that have transferred, immigrated, or passed away uh, through the accountability system in order for uh, any exit code uh, changes or using of these exit codes here on your screen uh, in order for that information to be properly shown on accountability reporting uh, for the public dashboard. So like I said, uh, DVR is required regardless of uh, the method of the data getting to OSDE. If you're using uh, the dropout report to update these exit codes, or if we were getting this information from your student information system, regardless of the, the method, a DVR is going to be required. So in order to make things uh, a little confusing, but not uh, necessarily, uh, we're trying not to have you all do uh, more uh, administrative type work uh, in terms of submitting documentation to the state. So uh, we're asking uh, for students that are in cohort years 2018 through 2020 to not do a on-screen data entry through the dropout report. You will need to do a DVR through accountability reporting. That information will sync back up into the uh, dropout report for students in that cohort year. Uh, the second little bullet I have here, I'm mentioning that uh, we're not expecting for you all to have to continue to edit data in this way. So like I said, it can get a little confusing having us 
force you to kind of remember which students are in what cohort year and submitting data changes through one office or another. So uh, we are actively in the middle of streamlining a process. Um, it'll most likely be through uh, the accountability reporting dashboard uh, where edits can be made in one single location for all historical data and it will sync up to any reports uh, say in the way that do need to be pulling from uh, historical information for uh, state and federal reporting purposes. So this whole situation that I just explained here uh, is uh, at the moment uh, only expected to be uh, in play for the 1920 dropout report. For school year 2021's uh, dropout report, we are expecting to have a much easier process for you all uh, in order to make it very straightforward on uh, where you go to upload documentation and how you are going to uh, request for updates to historical information. So for this year, we apologize for you know, any, any burden that this process is going to cause you, but for now, this is the most um, efficient way that we can uh, get this type of information. So again, just to sum it up, for students that are in cohorts 2018 through 2020, you are able to submit a DVR through accountability reporting. Uh, do not submit it through the dropout report uh, for any other student uh, grade seven and up uh, who are not in the cohort years I just mentioned. Uh, you can go into the dropout report and uh, correct the data on screen. Um, and that will be rolling out to every uh, district that needs it uh, throughout the afternoon and through tomorrow. Now let me address a few comments in the chat here. Will our changes made in the dropout report move pretty quickly to accountability? I've tried uploading a transcript on the graduate uh, on accountability, but I'm not able. Wondering if I need to change them to a graduate on the dropout report first. Typically, yes, the changes, if you're making them in the dropout report, as soon as accountability is ready to turn this syncing on, uh, you should see the same changes in uh, at least uh, the enrollment uh, tab, to my knowledge, uh, in accountability reporting. Uh, the same thing will apply for DVRs that are approved. Uh, through accountability reporting, they should get over to the dropout report, depending on timing, um, within 24 or 48 hours, kind of like how we're getting data from your student information system. Um, if you're having trouble with submitting a DVR um, through accountability reporting, that is a question that I would best pose to accountability. Um, and hopefully, like uh, mentioned in the chat here, uh, you guys should learn a little bit more um, about this situation uh, through their webinar since they are not here on the call today. All right, uh, so if you are making changes on, on the screen in the dropout report, errors will occur if you try to edit the entry or drop dates outside of the school year 2020 window. And like I mentioned earlier, the changes that you make will be immediate on the report, but it will take the report to refresh overnight uh, for that student to drop off of the report. Uh, this is just a, a limitation of uh, on-screen data entry uh, right now for this report. So you can make the changes, they will be immediate. You can see them uh, almost immediately after you click OK, um, but they will not immediately drop off of the report. And this is just a rehash of what I said earlier. 
uh, any student that re-enrolled during school year 21 uh, will be dropped off of the report so long as the STN between districts or sites uh, do match for that student. So if you're expecting a student to have transferred to another school or site and they're still showing up on your dropout report, uh, please reach out to us uh, and let us know uh, which district you're expecting that student to pop up at and we'll take a look and see if we can't track them down. If we can't, we'll just we'll let you know um, that we were not unable to find the student with the information that we've been given. Uh, so if there's anything else that you may have for that student, uh, we'll take it and we'll uh, do whatever we need to do to make sure that they're not inappropriately showing as a dropout. And like I said, uh, guidance, the updated guidance for everything that I just mentioned uh, will be up on our website here in a few. And we will be sending out an email uh, to everybody who has access to the report currently and superintendents uh, as well. So uh, everybody should know that of the updates and uh, everything that I kind of just mentioned here. So there are a couple of big changes here. In the meantime, uh, we have been saying that we're going to open the uh, twin of this report, which is just uh, a view for you to monitor any students that will potentially be considered a dropout uh, this time uh, in October when we uh, go ahead and start reporting for school year 2021's dropout report. Uh, so this is just going to be a view for you to review, we're not expecting you to certify this information since it could uh, could change between now and the end of this particular school year. So uh, just be on the lookout for that. It'll look exactly uh, the same as this particular report. And any changes, like I've said throughout the last couple of slides, any changes that you need to make uh, for these students in terms of exit information and whatnot uh, will happen in your student information system. And the dates on your screen are in a normal year. This is about when we would be opening these reports. This is a unusual reporting year for uh, the dropout report. Uh, we typically will be opening it much earlier in the year. Uh, so, all right. Uh, let me look here in the chat and see if there are any questions here. But if you do have any other questions, I will go ahead and uh, stop the recording here and we will.